Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ultimate Bucket List, and this is your complete guide to the city of Bath. Where to eat, what to do, how to hang out in the rooftop pool, and how to have the best time of your life in one of the most historic cities on Earth. England is full of ancient Roman cities, Londinium, Mamuchum, Eboracum, but there's one place that's significantly unique to the others. That place is Aquisullis, otherwise known as the modern day city of Bath. One of the most historic cities here in England is because of the naturally heated thermal spring that happens to be slap bang in the middle of the city. And when you step foot into the city of Bath, the history and culture oozes immediately from its walls. It's located right on the River Avon. On a nice day like today, it's nice to just walk around and enjoy the lovely scenery along the river. It's an idyllic location in the heart of rural Somerset. And even though this looks like a tiny village in the middle of the sticks, this is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. If you've got a bit of spare time, walk along the river and the canals and just take in the breathtaking scenery. The first place I recommend that you stop off at is the City of Bath World Heritage Centre. You can learn about the city and its UNESCO World Heritage status, and there are plenty of members of staff who are willing to help you out by handing you maps and advising you to where to go. Let's start by visiting the most famous attraction here in the City of Bath, and the entire reason why this city is here. This is the Roman Baths, and the building itself looks quite colossal. Once you buy your ticket, you're given an audio guide, which is very helpful in learning about the history of this place. So why is this place important? The reason why is because thousands of years ago, the Romans had found that this place has naturally thermally heated water from underground. So to capitalize on that, they decided to build an entire city around it. Most of the Roman structure is still intact, and when you walk out onto the terrace, you can see this lovely view. It's amazing to think that the Romans, thousands of years ago, built this structure around this thermally heated water. Listen to the audio guide as it provides you some very interesting commentary. But if you're not interested in learning about the history, you can at least see the funky statues that are dotted all the way around. It makes for some good photo and video opportunities. The best ones are on this corner here overlooking the abbey. If you're not sure how it works, this is basically a diagram indicating what's actually happening here. And when you look outside to the sacred pool, which no one's allowed to go in, you can actually see the bubbles rising from the spring of the naturally 46 degrees Celsius heated water, which is pretty amazing. In fact, I believe that this is the only place in the country that has it. So yeah, fairly unique by English standards. If you're a bit of a history buff, they've got plenty of exhibits and artifacts for you to have a look at whilst you're walking around the baths. And this is how it would have looked back in the day. One of the interesting things is the original temple pediment. Now this Zeus-like head, nobody actually knows what this is, but because it's so striking, it has now become the symbol of the city of Bath. It would have looked amazing back in the day. Whilst you're here actually, make sure you take the time to have a look at some of these Roman exhibits, because some of these are pretty interesting and ooh, hello there. Some of these are very, very interesting. From coins and mosaics and dead people, it's all very, very interesting. Admittedly, if you're not a history buff and you can't be bothered reading, that's what the audio guide is for. It's amazing to know that all of this was built before the age of modern machinery. You'll also find people in Roman costumes who are willing to help you out on the day. There seems to be a lot of projections of half-naked women around here. I'm certainly not complaining, but I think it's for some kind of historical reenactment. Easily the best spot to take photos and videos is of the lower level overlooking the baths and Bath Abbey in the background. So the best place to take photos and videos is right here on the southeast corner overlooking Bath Abbey. So if you want the best photos and videos, take them in the spot. And I know what you're going to be asking me. Can I touch the water? Can I drink the water? Can I bathe in the water? Unfortunately, no. 
It's actually very much untreated. You're pretty much going to get poisoned if you touch or drink the stuff. So please, no drinking this water. Not that you would anyway because it's kind of a ranted shade of green. But yeah, don't touch the water guys. If you're desperate to try some of the water, at the end of the tour, there's a fountain that you can actually drink the natural mineral water that happens to come from underground. What does this water taste like? Oh my god, that's disgusting! It literally tastes like rust. So yeah, if you don't like tasting rust, don't drink the water here. At the end of the tour is the Roman bath shop, which will sell you lots of Roman style paraphernalia and stuff. So that's good. Right next door is the other most famous attraction here in Bath. This is Bath Abbey. It's basically a big giant cathedral. Even if you don't like churches, it's a nice place to hang around, especially when you've got musicians and performers performing in this square here. But if you don't mind going in, technically it is free of charge to enter. They suggest a £5 donation at the door, but you honestly don't have to pay that if you don't want to. It's actually quite nice. It's definitely a lot lighter than quite a lot of the cathedrals that I tend to visit. The layout is pretty much the same. You've got this bit here, the nave, where all of us commoners sit, and you've got the choir where all the monks and the priests sit. There's various offshoots of various other chapels that you can have a private prayer in if you want to, but overall it's actually quite a nice abbey to visit. The reason why Bath Abbey is so important is because it's the first church in the country that coronated a king. So yes, in the year 973, the first ever king of England was crowned. It is one of the nicer cathedrals that you'll visit in this country. Right, after a morning of sightseeing, it's time to eat stuff. The building right next door is the Roman Pump House. Originally, it used to be the pump house for the baths, but nowadays, it's this grand ballroom that you can have your dinner in. You'll need a reservation to eat in this place, but it's actually quite nice. You've got a live piano player playing on a Steinway, and it's a nice way to enjoy fine British dining. Along Bath High Street, you'll find lots of modern eateries, so you're definitely spoiled for choice here in the city of Bath. The main high street runs from north to south, and you won't struggle to find anything here. But whilst you're walking around, you'll notice the old architecture, some really, really old buildings, all made with this yellowish stone. This is famous Bath limestone, and you'll find that most of the city is constructed with this stuff. And when you do walk around the city, you'll notice the historic baths, the Victorian architecture, mixed with the modern architecture, but overall, it's a very historic place. And if you like all of this old stuff, with the cobble streets, with the Greek style architecture, this place is pretty much perfect for you. This wouldn't look out of place in France, in Italy. It's one of the more picturesque cities here in England. There's plenty of roadside eateries and cafes for you to waste away the afternoon with. But whilst you're here in the city of Bath, you might want to try the unique food item that you won't find anywhere else in the world. This unique food item is called the Bath Bun. Only two places in the entire city actually do them. The first is historic Sally Lunds. Located in the oldest house in the city of Bath, Sally Lunds is the original purveyor of the Bath Bun, which is basically a very sweet version of a French brioche bun. Except that it's a lot lighter, it's got a lot less butter, and it's significantly bigger. You could try one of these right here at Sally Lunds. You might need to book in advance, especially if you're going there for dinner. But as with all establishments, there's a rival literally around the corner. Right here is the Bath Bun Tea House. It's a traditional style tea house that serves their own version of the Bath Bun. So their version is basically a smaller version of a Sally Lun, but they put crystallized sugar and fruit on top. If you do eat inside the Bath Bun, you'll come across one of the most quaint tea houses, very traditional, very 1900s, and yes, because you're in a traditional tea house, you have to drink the tea the correct way with your pinky up. Okay, you don't actually have to do that, but you know, when in Rome, I guess. So what does a bath bun taste like? Well, wait, what's this? They actually bake a lump of sugar into the bread. Huh, that's fairly unique. If I had to pick between the two, I would pick the bath bun 
over the Sally Lun. But I know a lot of people would say the complete opposite, so it's definitely worth a try at both establishments. So once you've had your fill of really, really sweet bread, it's now time to walk towards the northern part of the city, where you'll find Queen Square with a somewhat replica Washington State Monument. You'll need to walk along Gay Street. I'm not kidding, it's actually called that. Where you'll find two significant structures. The Circus, which is basically a circle of very colonial buildings, all decked out in this Bath limestone. And whilst it's very nice to look at and take photos of, I definitely felt a little bit out of place here. Not just because of the shirt I'm wearing, but because I feel that this place is just inhabited with rich people. That's even more the case here at the Royal Crescent, which is kind of like a semicircle of very similar buildings. And once again, it's very nice to look at and there's some people with some very fancy cars here, but other than taking a few photos and videos, there's not really that much here. I mean, you could go into the Royal Crescent Museum, but to me, it felt like just rich people stuff. Besides, there's plenty of other museums here in the north section of Bath. In fact, it's famous for it. Around here, you'll find the biggest collection of museums in this city. The most famous of which, the Assembly Rooms, which is a very grand building. Unfortunately, they've closed due to filming because there's lots of people wearing these period costumes and lots of TV fans outside. There's the Museum of Bath at work. Mm, I didn't bother doing that one. The Museum of Bath Architecture, which unfortunately was closed. I definitely would have done that one. I'm glad the Museum of East Asian Arts is at least nearby. That's one I'm definitely looking forward to. And are you kidding me? That's closed as well? Ugh. If you're a big fan of Jane Austen, the Jane Austen Center is nearby. And later on, we'll show you where she used to live. But having been disappointed at the lack of museums that are open, I decided to check out this lovely looking church here. Wait, wait a minute. Hang on. Have they converted it to a coffee shop? Seriously? You've converted a church into a coffee shop? Oh my goodness. Yes, this church is actually a big giant coffee shop now, where you can pray and order a latte at the same time. Yes, I'll have one cappuccino and one baptismal, please. Certainly, sir. That'll be £9.60. It's a pretty quirky place, and even if you go in just to take a few photos and videos, it's actually quite a memorable piece of your trip. Speaking of memorable, let me point you out to the most famous bridge here in the city, the Pulteney Bridge. Now, when you're on the bridge, it looks like any ordinary street, but it's only when you go down the Grand Parade that you'll notice, hang on a minute, that was a bridge. Yes, this is one of the few inhabited bridges here in the country, and it's very similar to the Rialto Bridge in Venice. And it's a good backdrop for if you want to take a boat ride down the River Avon. It's a very picturesque location, with the bridge in the background and the Pulteney Weir right here. Hey look, there's an artist capturing it. Has he done a good job? Yes, I think he has. That's pretty accurate. Fancy canoeing towards the weir? Yeah, absolutely. If you carry on walking down the Pulteney Bridge, you'll come across Great Pulteney Street. It's a very French style looking boulevard. The architecture is great, but admittedly not much to do. There are, however, some very expensive restaurants on this street, so if money's no object, eat here. But right at the end is the Holborn Museum, a museum dedicated to the history of Bath, that when I got there, surprise, surprise, it had closed for the day. Yay. But the buildings and the grounds are nice. Hey lady, it's closed already. Whilst you're on Great Pulteney Street, you'll come across this unassuming green space. This is the famous Bath Recreation Ground. It's home to Bath Croquet Club, Bath Cricket Ground, and this stadium right here, which you wouldn't think that it's anything special, but this tiny stadium is one of the most iconic in the country. This is the Recreation Ground Stadium, and it's home to Bath Rugby, one of the oldest clubs in World Rugby, and one of the most successful here in England. It's amazing to think that one of the world's most famous rugby teams plays out of very basic facilities such as this. In fact, I think all the stands are temporary. Currently, it's the end of the rugby season, but one day I'll come back and I actually watch a game here at the Recreation Ground Stadium. But the absolute best thing to do here in the city of Bath, 
I've saved this for last. Let's go back into the center of town and around the corner from the Roman baths is this place, the Thermae Bath Spa. Now you can't bathe in the Roman baths, but this relatively modern facility, you can. You can experience what it's like to bathe in thermally heated waters directly from underground. And this facility, not only does it have an underground pool, it also has a rooftop pool. So you can bathe in thermally heated water overlooking this picturesque city of Bath. Not only does it have two pools, it has a selection of saunas and steam rooms. So if you are stressed, come here and I guarantee you won't be afterwards. Please note that they employ a strict no mobile phone and no camera policy. So if you do want to take photos and videos, they won't let you. It's a little bit on the pricey side, especially seeing as though you only get two hours in this place, but trust me, spend the money. It's worth every single penny. You'll notice in the city of Bath, there's plenty of massive green spaces that you can just chillax in, such as here, the parade gardens, which unfortunately you have to pay to enter. But the best place to take in views of the city of Bath is right here in the south side of the city at Alexandra Park. Now, unfortunately, it's high on a hill, and you'll need to climb some significant distance in order to reach it. But when you do, the views are simply stunning. The views from Bath, from up here at Alexandra Park, are pretty stunning. I mean, look at this. You can actually see the entire city from here. But boy, do they make you work for it. There's a couple of things I didn't do, such as visit the University of Bath and the American Museum. I would have loved to have done that, but by the time I finished this video, everything had closed. Overall guys, Bath is a place that you'd want to visit once in your life. Not only to experience the history and the culture, but to bathe in thermal waters, eat tons of sweetbread, or whilst taking in some of the most incredible sights that you'll find here in England. Okay Nin, I'm sold. What do I need to do? Well, you'll need to come here to the city of Bath. It's very well connected. You can get here via the M5 and M4 motorways, if you're using public transport, the main train station is Bath Spa. There's plenty of buses that will take you here and the nearest international airports are Birmingham International and Cardiff. The cost? Bath is a reasonably priced city. However, the attractions can be quite pricey. Especially the Thermé Spa, that's easily the most expensive thing you'll do here in the city of Bath. But trust me, spend the money, it's definitely worth it. As you can imagine from an international city, Bath isn't short on places to eat and drink, and the prices are fairly reasonable. Hotels in the city can be quite pricey, so if you're on a strict budget, I recommend that you stay outside the city of Bath and use public transportation to get in. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes, whilst the majority of the city of Bath is flat, everything around it is not. It can get quite hilly in places, and if you're not big on hills or if you're struggling to walk, going to places such as Alexandra Park can be quite a bad idea. Also, attractions in Bath are more expensive on weekends than they are on weekdays. So if you're in Bath on a weekend, expect to pay a little bit more for things like hotels, attractions and food. And you might need to book the attractions in advance, especially if you're coming on a weekend. I visited Bath on a Wednesday, I didn't struggle to get into anywhere, but I've heard reports that it's sometimes painful to get into the more popular attractions. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. Comment on the comment section below, and if you've got any other bucket list ideas you know what to do, tweet them at me. If I get enough of these suggestions, I'll go ahead and do that. So guys, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.